So in my previous tech tip, I covered how to get RS Logic's Micro Starter Lite, I know that's a mouthful, for free, along with RS Link Classic, you need that, that's the driver, and RS Logic's Emulate 500, that's the PLC emulator. So yes, you can use RS Logic's Micro Starter Lite with the 1100. If you wanna use it with all Micro Logics, you can buy the Micro, RS Logic's Micro Starter, I think it's $200, the price changes a little bit over time, and then, um, if you want to program Slick 500s and Micros, you can get RS Logics 500, okay? But that's very expensive these days. So in any case, um, what I wanted to show those people, let's say you are one of those people who have, you're supporting Slick 500s and PLC 5s, maybe even Micrologics, and you're like, okay, you showed me how to get the free software, Sean. How do I use it? So I wanted to give you a quick tutorial on that today in today's tech tip. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to open up RS Logics Micro Starter Lite. <laughs> We're just going to call it RS Logics Micro from now on. And uh, what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna do file new. I'm gonna create a new file. I'm just gonna use the lowest possible, you can see only 1100s I listed here. I'm gonna use the lowest possible one. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna grab what we would call an Allen Bradley language. Well, first, because it's, because it's Allen Bradley uh, Rockwell, we have to insert a wrong. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab what we call an XIC, what other people call a normally open, okay? And then I'm gonna grab an OTE, which other people call a, uh, a coil, right? So here, I'm gonna just put the first input and output on these instructions. So let me just go and grab the input and I'm just gonna drag it right onto the, uh, the input instruction. And then what I can do here is go up one and I can take, well, nope, go down two. <laughs> so now what I can do here is go down one and I can grab the output and drop it right there. Okay, so this is really the most, the simplest PLC program you could have, right? Directly proportional, um, you know, where you're using an input and an output instruction, okay? You could just have an unconditional output instruction on the rung. You know, we do that in our course, we call that our run light. So if the PLC is in run mode, that light's on. But here, this is like a light switch, you know? We, we actually go in how to do like a two-way switch and all kinds of, you know, ands, ors, xors, nors, and all that in our courses. But in any case, just for this tech tip, I wanted to keep it simple. And of course, with uh, RS Logix, you wanna click here to verify it. No issues, everything's good. So now, let me save this. I'm just gonna save this as, this is, uh, Call it ATT02, because this is Tech Tip 2. Okay, and now I'm ready to download it to my emulator, right? And run it. But wait, you have to do something first. We're going to go into RS Links Classic. Okay, and in here, I need to add a driver for the emulator. Okay, so let me hit the, the uh, cable button here, and I'm going to look for the emulator. Emulator, emulator. There it is right there. Okay, add new, accept the default name. I'm gonna accept this default address and click on close. Okay, now I have an emulator driver, but I have no PLCs on that network to download to. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna actually start up the emulator. Now you will get this nuisance error, just ignore it, okay? There is a edit you can do in the, in the uh, registry to get rid of this, but um, you could also just click that. <laughs> but if it starts annoying you, just search the web for, you know, RS Logix, Emulate 500, Windows, uh, you know, registry error. Uh, but in any case, so what we have to do is, before we do anything, the first thing we have to do in our emulator is we have to load a file for it to emulate. We can't download to nothing. So let me go grab ATT2, I'll click on open. I'm gonna give this an address of one on my virtual network and click on okay. And then, you know, I can put it in run here or I can't, it doesn't really matter, I'm gonna put it in run. So now if we minimize emulate, we come back to our slinks, we can see that we have a virtual PLC running there, right? And it's a 1000, that's the one I chose. Um, and now, if I wanted to, I could, if I made changes to this, I could now download to it, com system comms, right? And I could uh, select my virtual PLC and go download to it, but I didn't make any changes. So I'm just gonna go online, right? Boom, and now I'm online. You can see it's in the run mode. I got green power rails. You can see this is off because it's an emulator. There's nothing in the world to turn, real world to turn on. Now, because this is an emulated PLC, because there's no physical IO modules that it's reading from, right? I can actually just toggle this bit on right here, right? Toggle on, pretending I'm pressing a push button and holding it down, and I can see the outputs on, right? Now, um, if this was a real PLC, you couldn't do that because the input scan would be writing over it like every, I don't know, 10 milliseconds, really fast. So you can't 
typically toggle on. You could force it on, right? So we could do a force on if we wanted to. In this particular controller, forces are always enabled. But in that case, I just wanted to show you just a quick little tech tip on how to um, use that free software I showed you in the previous tech tip. And with that, I hope you found that helpful. And until next time, my friends, peace.